Hello, I'm Mike, and this is the 2021 Mazda CX-3. And I'm also Mike, and this is the 2021 Nissan Kicks. Of these two subcompact crossovers, which one is best? Well, to find that out, we have to go Let's for Let's go it. for a drive. That's my line. Just roll the intro. Starting things off in the 2021 Mazda CX-3, it has a 2.5 liter turbocharged engine under the hood. Okay, no, it doesn't have the 2.5 turbo engine, but it seems like Mazda has been putting that engine into pretty much their entire lineup. The only two cars that don't have it is this and the MX-5. So I wonder when they'll be getting it. Anyway, what this car actually has under the hood is a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder and it produces 148 horsepower and 146 pound-feet of torque. Compared to the 2021 Nissan Kicks SR, it has a 1.6 liter engine that only produces 122 horsepower and 114 pound-feet of torque. So although both engines are naturally aspirated, which means instant response as soon as you put your foot down, the CX-3 obviously you don't have to put your foot down quite as hard to get away from a stop or to just overtake someone on a highway. Plus, it makes a pretty good noise as well when you accelerate. Actually, I would say that Mazdas make the best sounding four-cylinder engines out of their competitors. So in terms of outright performance, I'm gonna give a point to the Mazda CX-3. However, while the 2021 Nissan Kicks does not have as powerful of an engine as the CX-3, it is more fuel efficient. It is rated for 7.7 .7 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 6.6 .6 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway. The Mazda CX-3 all-wheel drive is rated for 8.6 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 7.4 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway. However, if we compare apples to apples, as in the front-wheel drive version of the CX-3 against this obviously only front-wheel drive version of the Nissan Kicks, then the Nissan Kicks is still more fuel efficient. So in terms of fuel economy, a point to the Nissan Kicks. When it comes to transmissions, the Nissan Kicks is equipped with what Nissan likes to use all the time, a CVT transmission. When you're just accelerating gradually from a stop, it behaves like a traditional CVT, as in it'll hold the RPMs to a set amount until you reach your desired speed but put your foot down a little bit harder and it starts to replicate virtual gears. However, in terms of driving enjoyment, a CVT is nowhere near as good or as much fun as a traditional automatic, which is what the Mazda CX-3 has. It's a six-speed automatic. However, in Canada at least, you can get it with a six-speed manual. In the United States, unfortunately, you do not have this option. But here in Canada, it's also limited to just the base model of the CX-3 and only in front wheel drive. If you want a different trim and you want it with all wheel drive, it has to be the six speed automatic. But it's not that bad of a transmission. It's actually arguably the best six speed automatic that is made today. Actually, not that many manufacturers still make six-speed automatics since most of them move to seven, eight, or nine-speed automatics or dual-clutch transmissions or CVTs. But for a six-speed automatic, it is very fast to shift gears and the shifts are very smooth. So which one do I want to give a point to? I'm kind of leaning to giving each one a point because while this CVT is not as much fun to drive as the six-speed automatic, it is 
much better at providing maximum fuel economy. And on the flip side, that 6-speed automatic is much more enjoyable than this CVT. So they were both designed for completely different things and they both do those different things exceptionally well. So yeah, I'm gonna give a point to each one in terms of transmissions. When it comes to braking, both vehicles have four-wheel disc brakes as well as automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection. However, the Nissan Kicks is about 100 kilograms lighter, but in a way, the Mazda actually feels better under braking. The brake pedal just feels a little bit more firm and it gives you that extra bit of confidence to really stomp on it should you need to in an, in an emergency situation. Try saying that fast a few times. But anyway, when it comes to braking, I am going to give a point to the Mazda. And it's a similar story when it comes to handling as well. The steering just feels a bit more responsive and it gives you a little bit more feedback in the Mazda as it does in the Nissan Kicks. In the Kicks, the steering is quite light, which of course makes it very easy to maneuver if you're in a small parking lot. But for driving enjoyment, this is the car that you want to be in. It's not overly heavy or it's not going to tire you out at the end of a journey, but it just feels that much better and you can actually feel what the front wheels are doing as opposed to the Nissan Kicks. And of course, this Mazda CX-3 is all-wheel drive, so if you live in a climate where it snows a lot and you get a lot of snow, you might want to consider the all-wheel drive system. Otherwise, just a good set of winter tires is more than enough for winter driving situations. So in terms of overall handling and driving dynamics, a point to the Mazda CX-3. When it comes to ride comfort in the 2021 Nissan Kicks, it's actually really good. The suspension is a little bit on the softer side, so it absorbs really badly potholed city streets very well. And it has slightly smaller wheels and slightly thicker sidewall tires than the Mazda CX-3. So that also aids in absorbing bumps and potholes. And when it comes to ride comfort in the Mazda CX-3, the suspension is a little bit firmer than in the Kicks and it does have bigger wheels with slightly lower profile tires. So it is to be expected that the ride isn't quite as smooth and as forgiving as it is in the Nissan Kicks. I'm not saying that the ride is uncomfortable because you can still do long journeys in the CX-3 and not feel tired at the end of your journey. But in terms of overall comfort and providing the utmost comfort, the Nissan Kicks is better. So a point to the Nissan Kicks for ride comfort. As for noises and squeaks and rattles, neither of the cars have any squeaks or rattles that I noticed during my time with them. But in terms of noise, and this is a little bit surprising to me, the Mazda is a little bit noisier. So in terms of road and wind noise, they're both pretty much identical. But when it comes to engine noise, I'm noticing the engine in the Mazda more often than I'm noticing it in the Nissan Kicks. As I said, this is not actually a bad sounding engine in the CX-3. It's actually one of the better sounding four cylinders out there. But you always hear it, whether you're just gently accelerating from a stop or when you're overtaking someone you always hear it. So if you don't like the sound of it, well, unfortunately there isn't that much you can do. Maybe turn up the volume on the stereo. The Nissan Kicks, because of its CVT transmission, it tries to keep the engine RPMs as low as possible. So that's why you don't really notice it or hear it quite as often in that car as you do in this CX-3. So in terms of overall noise and vibrations, I'm gonna give a point to the Nissan Kicks which is very surprising to me because I thought this would be actually quieter, but it isn't. When it comes to interior space in the 2021 Nissan Kicks, there is loads of it. I am six foot four and in this driving position, my knees are not hitting up against the dashboard and I have loads of headroom. 
I also sit quite high up, higher than in the CX-3, even though this seating position right now is in its lowest setting. So I have very good visibility all around. When it comes to the back though, well, how is it back there? It's actually pretty good back here. I have just enough legroom and just enough headroom. So yeah, it's okay. So there you have it. I can actually sit behind myself reasonably comfortably. When it comes to interior space in the Mazda CX-3, there's plenty of it up here in the front. My knees are not hitting against the dashboard and my hair is not brushing up against the headliner, even with this sunroof. In the back, however, things are a little different. How is it back there? I'm not very comfortable back here. I don't really have that much leg room or head room. It's very tight back here. There you have it. Less space in the back seats than the Nissan Kicks. So in terms of overall interior space, a point to the Nissan Kicks. As for cargo capacity, the two crossovers trade a few punches. The Kicks has more cargo capacity with the seats up at 716 liters versus 504 liters for the CX-3, so a point to the Kicks. But fold those rear seats down and the Mazda has more space at 1,209 liters versus the Nissan's 914 liters. So a point to the Mazda. When it comes to gadgets, both cars come very well equipped with some features that you would expect. So for example, they both have heated seats and heated steering wheel. They both have automatic climate control, push button start, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Although for the CX-3 it has wireless CarPlay and wired Android Auto, unfortunately. This Kix has just wired for both CarPlay and Android Auto. They also have adaptive cruise control and really weird and interesting cup holders. Although I feel like the cup holders in this Kix are just a little bit better, but they're both kind of bad to be honest because they both really shake your drinks around. However, where they differ a little bit is the fact that this Kix has surround view cameras and the CX-3 doesn't. And it also has these Bose speakers in the headrests. Although if you ask me, these are a little bit of a gimmick. As for gadgets in the Mazda CX-3, it has, like I said, a lot of the same stuff that the Nissan Kix has. But unique stuff to the Mazda include a head-up display, the sunroof, as well as navigation that's part of the infotainment system and a power driver seat with memory, something that the Kicks doesn't have. So when it comes to overall gadgets, I want to give a point to the Mazda. Albeit all these gadgets do come at an extra cost, but hey, at least they are available. As for the infotainment systems, the CX-3 still utilizes the old infotainment system, not the new one that is found in the Mazda CX-30, for example. It looks very dated. The touchscreen only functions when the car is stationary, and it takes quite a while for it to load up on cold starts. The Kix, on the other hand, has a faster and larger 8-inch touchscreen with an infotainment system that looks much more modern. Granted, it does not have a native navigation system or wireless CarPlay like the Mazda, but you can use Google Maps and wireless CarPlay eats up a lot of your phone's battery charge. So another point to the kicks for the infotainment system. Safety is a big selling point for family vehicles and the 2021 Nissan Kicks has a bit of an advantage. As standard, it has blind spot sensors, rear cross traffic alert, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, rear emergency braking, lane departure warning, and parking sensors. By comparison, the 2021 Mazda CX-3 only offers automatic emergency braking, blind spot sensors, and rear cross traffic alert as standard. If you want more safety and driver aids, you have to move up in trims. So for safety, a point to the Nissan Kicks. When it comes to how the interiors look of the two cars, I'm not really going to give any points because interior looks are subjective, but I do prefer the looks of the Mazda more. However, what I can give points on is materials. This leather in the Mazda and the suede is real and it feels really nice. Whereas in the Nissan, they use something called Primatex 
for their upholstery, which feels very coarse and rough and not really nice to the touch. So for interior materials, a point to the Mazda. When it comes to the outside, it's the opposite of the inside, to my eyes at least. Again, I'm not going to award any points based on exterior looks because they're subjective, but I do like the looks of the Kicks more than the CX-3. What I will award a point on is warranty. The 2021 Nissan Kicks comes with a 3-year 60,000 km or 36,000 mile new vehicle warranty and a 5-year 100,000 km or 60,000 miles powertrain warranty. The 2021 Mazda CX-3 has the same time period for new vehicle and powertrain warranties, but it has unlimited mileage for both instead of the limited distance that the Kicks has. So for warranty, a point to the Mazda CX-3. But just a small note on the unlimited mileage, it's only available in Canada. In the United States, it's 36,000 and 60,000 miles respectively. So right now, the scores are tied but the deciding factor is gonna be price. This SR trim of the Nissan Kicks costs $25,000 Canadian, whereas this GT trim of the Mazda CX-3 costs $31,000 Canadian. However, even if we compare base price to base price, the Nissan Kicks starts at just under $20,000 Canadian, whereas the CX-3 starts at just over $21,000 Canadian. So for pricing, a point to the Nissan. And the Nissan won this competition by the skin of its teeth. However, in the mornings, I always found myself reaching for the Mazda key because it just drives really, really well for what it is. But the Mazda is not for everyone. In fact, I'm willing to bet that more people are gonna buy the Kicks instead. It's more spacious on the inside. You get more value for your money. It's less expensive and it's more fuel efficient. So this is a better city crossover. If you want to know more about both of these vehicles, I wrote a more detailed review of them over on my website. You can find that link in the video description. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or probably a couple of other uh, SUVs or crossovers. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.